If Battle of Gods equates to being somewhere between The Force Awakens and Star Trek 2009, then Resurrection F is between The Last Jedi and Star Trek Into Darkness. You know, in talking about Battle of Gods, I didn't go into in-depth with a lot of the characters because so much of it is a retelling later and I do want to eventually review Dragon Ball Super as a series when I rewatch it, but I also want to talk about some of that here. Beerus and Whis are such cool additions to the mythology that build later on and seeing how strong Beerus was and then Whis knock him out was pretty telling. So when Resurrection F was announced and that Frieza was coming back, many fans were upset. I was excited just to see something, even though it is like, oh, of course they're bringing back another villain, but there's so much potential there. Let's see what they can do. Not as many fans are into this one, and I have split opinions on those movies. I love Into Darkness, and I think Last Jedi is just okay. But Resurrection F can't help but retread old stories and rob characters of glory for the sake of shock value or subversion, all while being too inconsequential and lacking serious explanations in the story. Still, it's mostly great seeing old characters shine for a bit despite the odd power scaling. A throwaway line, and I know Super corrects this with bringing Togoma and Ginyu back. But in this, a throwaway line about the red guy, I think Shishami's his name, training with Frieza would have gone a long way in seeing Piccolo have trouble with him and go on having to go Super Saiyan to beat him. And even though Frieza is a prodigy, there should have been a greater amount of time for Frieza to even come close to Goku's level. The fact that he only trained for three months is just like, it's creating problems. And now when you see where the manga's at now, it's creating more problems. They may have mostly toyed with him, but it's a big leap and a tough pill to swallow. There are so many little instances where canon and sense within the lore is thrown out, but getting Tien, Krillin, and even Roshi to be relevant again in strength is pretty fun. Gohan is once again so depowered it is embarrassing, even though that's been corrected since. But come on, man, make it compelling and explain it like Superhero did not. The further world building, and I mentioned this earlier, with Whis and Beerus is great fun. Just wish we'd gotten more of an explanation for Super Saiyan Blue. And Vegeta's big moment is wonderful attacking Frieza, but it's short-lived. And he's ultimately robbed in favor of Goku, as usual. Again, it's hard to buy the stakes. This is one where I'm wondering if the extra episodes in Super may do it justice once I get around to them. I skipped them in the past because I didn't see the point with the poor animation. But knowing that Ginyu comes back and some other things are explored more in depth, it might be worth it. As an action fest DBZ or DB super movie, it's a standout though. Gorgeous despite some overused CGI in the fights that doesn't kind of mesh as well as you would think it would. Wonderful choreography and voice acting. Just phenomenal visual storytelling and one of the best scores in DBZ film that I can remember. They made some questionable decisions, but there's no doubt that it's a rip-roaring good time. The fan in me squealed when Frieza came back, as he is so similar to Palpatine in so many ways. There are some missed opportunities, but those aside, there's a lot to love here, and it does allow so many forgotten characters to shine that it makes it sort of special. And that makes up for a good bit. Where this leads for Super is fun and also a great foundation, even if this film is a little bit messier and sloppier than you would expect it to, given the title. But on another hand, it's nice to have another action-packed, hilarious DBZ film. Vegeta getting between Goku and Frieza to only start attacking Goku is one of the best and most hilarious scenes I've seen in this saga. Despite missing the glory in the end with the final fight, these films really highlight the best aspects of Vegeta as a good guy, and I hope we continue to get more of that eventually. I give Dragon Ball Z Resurrection F 4 out of 5 stars. Again, I don't know why they didn't just call this Dragon Ball Super, probably because it got retconned later. Please like, subscribe, and remember, always look for the good.